Hello good people, George with Virtual Staging here. It seems the topic of virtual staging it's been popular and especially the perspective match part of it. And uh, maybe in general perspective match is interesting. So in this video answer I decided to create a bit more interesting information to share with you. I've, I went deep into the technicalities and I'll try to explain you in the simplest way how we can fix distorted images in Photoshop and then we can use them in 3ds Max for our virtual staging. But before you start thinking if we should fix them at all, if there is a simple solution for it, my answer is yes and it depends by the way and there is all reasons, many reasons for that. Stick around and in the next few minutes I will explain you how we can create a good perspective match with image like this one and like that one and like this one and like that one and like many other things but yeah, I really hate when photographers take images with fish lens and very wide lenses this really destroys and actually it is deceiving but anyway I'm not a, a big fan of those things but yeah we have to live with them so stick around and let's get started In one of my other videos for Perspective Match, Faisal left a comment asking if the technique works with all images. The short answer is yes, but there are a few exceptions where you need to put some work with Photoshop and with a bit more knowledge from this video, you will handle most of the images like a pro. And this is the scene which Faisal sent. Instantly I see the verticals of the box are not really verticals, while the background photo looks pretty much on point. Obviously something smells fish here. And before I try to readapt the image with vanishing lines tool, I must mention that the building scenes in millimeters is not a good idea. If you can make most of the scenes in centimeters, do it. I've got the same results as he had, so this is a clear sign we need to move on to Photoshop. Inside Photoshop you can go to filter and then adaptive wide angle. This is the constraint tool and it allows you to draw vertical splines. I will start in my case with the door frames on the left. When the, when the spline is ready, select it, right click and pick verticals. Those verticals basically locks the spline and tells Photoshop that this is a 100% straight vertical line. Do this for a few other visible and vertical parts of the image equally. The best scenario will be to have at least one on the left, one in the middle and one on the right hand side of the image. All lock splines will have purple colors, while the non-locked ones will be blue. Upon creating of a spline, Photoshop shows you the curvature. You can see it on the left part of the room. Be cautious, if you lock too many verticals, you will destroy the perspective and the scale of the image. This will require you later on to crop out some vital information. The right click of a spline gives you two other options, horizontal and arbitrary, which I will cover in another video. On the right there is a drop down called correction. This means you have a few presets and Photoshop automatically gives you what type of image you have. It's fish eye as you guessed it. <laughs> Apparently I've used too many verticals because of the, the sake of this tutorial I've exaggerated and it, as you can see I've destroyed my perspective even more than if it was distorted. I'm going to copy the layer Control J and re rename everything so I'll start on, from scratch on a new layer and this is the second option for fixing distorted images. It is more manual but you can achieve fantastic results. This method uses the ruler tools in Photoshop. You can activate them with Control R or the drop down view and then rulers. It is really easy to work. Just left click track to where you think your verticals are and this should be it. Again, intentionally I'm adding uh, rulers on the mirror which obviously is not vertical. When doing verticals avoid moving objects as reference points. The next step is Ctrl T or drop down edit and then freeze transform. The transform tool I think you should know it by now. Uh, with the endpoints of the transform tool you can move and adjust the image until your vertical parts of the image match with the blue reference lines. In this example, all the adjustments with the transform tool are minor and they look almost like nothing. But this doesn't mean the tool will not improve the end results later on. 
According to the technical papers I've spent 3 hours reading, images shot with fisheye lens contains distortion and they deform the objects. So far nothing new, but to correct those lens distortions, most methods use prior information uh, such as calibration patterns or lens design specifications built in with the software. However, those patterns work best only when the input scene or photo is 2D plane or very flat image on its diagonals. In our it's not it's not like that, it's far from that. Lens distortion has been a huge challenge in Photoshop and photography in the years and just recently some amazing team of scientists in April 2019 discovered some way which may help us soon but not now jump really over those distortion issues. And now let's go back to GS Max and load up our two images and see what happens there. After the Photoshop manipulation with the adaptive white angle tool, we see some improvement but it's teeny teeny bobby. I have to really skew the red vanishing lines in order to get some straight verticals for my 3D box object. And now uh, in the second image, I will load up entirely new 3ds Max and we'll start from scratch but this time in centimeters. Before I continue with 3ds Max, I will get back to Photoshop and test few more times if we can achieve a better results with the image. I don't need my reference lines for now, so top drawn view and then clear guides and I'm going to load the wide angle tool again. But this time I will play with the options on the right hand side of the screen and not that much with the splines. And basically I will use both methods as a way to fix the distorted image. As you can see the corrections are really tiny but sometimes they make a difference. In this case nothing will make a difference and you will see why just in a, in a minute. I will save the image with a different name uh, so I can really recognize inside 3ds Max what I'm loading and I will go back to 3ds Max and load the image and you will see what a really tiny difference makes. And I'm back in Photoshop, but this time we'll load lens corrections. This is a non-destructive tool as well, like such, just like the white angle tool, but it has a little bit more manual options and I really need only the geometrical distortion on the image. The problem with geometric distortion tool and with all those tools in general is, is if it's you can really break your image if you don't know what you are doing. And even if you know what you're doing, you can break it again. And there are a few other rulers and things which you can use here and there and not really, no. So don't really exaggerate and all of the creations you should make are really subtle. As you can see, I can really fix the verticals if I really need to fix them, but this doesn't solve my problem on the sides and I will need to crop out a massive chunk of my image. Cropping things all out of your images will result in a problems with the, your client as a realtor or homeowner doesn't matter whoever is the, is the guy there because they want to showcase the whole property as much as possible and as soon as i'm satisfied with the results at least to some degree i'm going to go back and reuse my guides basically those blue lines which we, we just used a few minutes ago and in this third example, I'm using both methods uh, merge into one and I think this gives you more manual control and I it's just I've, with the years I've discovered I've got better results using those two methods simultaneously. And before you fall asleep, here is what is the important bit. It is really doesn't matter which tool you use, uh, the manual, the lens correction, the white angle tool, blah 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 blah, any third party, doesn't matter. 
What it matters is those 70% of the image which are in red right now and though they are the point of interest, your center of the image, that should be really straight and really on point. The rest is just a filler. The point of interest topic is part of other videos which I will talk more in depth about composition, the 3D space and a few other things but that's for later. And now let's move on to inside 3ds Max back again. I'm loading the image I just created inside 3ds Max. Results are better but the vertical issue is there. Please don't be upset and smash your keyboard yet because I have the solution to this issue. Here is a trick. When you deal with very distorted images which cannot be fixed 100% in Photoshop, when you align your vanishing lines, spread them equally just like a butter on all parts of the image and make them very extended, just as if you will make them to cross each other. I know this goes in complete opposite from the other video but not all images are created equally so not all solutions should be the same, right? By the way, use this technique only with very distorted images like this one or others but not with the proper ones because it will not work well. Pay attention to the box, if I make the box straight, the chairs look not on point almost as if they will slip to the, to the right, out of the image into the other living room <laughs> and here is the question for you guys why we do virtual staging and what is our goal there <laughs> i hope you felt right and i haven't watched x files recently by the way so the main goal of virtual staging is to showcase the space in the best light possible, right? We covered that. So in my case, I must demonstrate that those three chairs fit nice and straight without worrying. And the space is great, awesome, fantastic. And I don't really worry about that box. Who cares? The box is just for guess what? Reference. I will continue with building this room uh, as a, an object, so uh, I, I will be silent for the next 10 seconds and you can just watch. And now I'm going to explain to you why I'm doing what I'm doing. So I've built my room almost and I wanted to make sure that I'm right on point with the floor where the floor meets with all the walls this is very important because from the all the verticals starts from the floor the ceiling if you're not doing any work for the to the ceiling it doesn't really matter and in this case i'm not doing anything to the ceiling so the left hand side corner it can be off because it will be off because the image is off so we got it that it's heavily distorted it's not Faisal's problem it's it comes from the photographer who shot the image with wide angle or fisheye lens and now i will speed up the video again until i reach the point where i have to render and add some lights and i'll explain you the next part then As you can see, so far my progress has been awesome. I have really nice image, the chairs are straight and everything is fine. I mean, you will never say that this image is heavily distorted because it doesn't look distorted, but it looks distorted in 3D, which no, no one knows. And here is the next trick. Actually, it's a cheat, but cheat is not a good word. I don't like cheating. You should not cheat. By the way, never cheat, even in 3D. So let's call it this purple box, a painting. Imagine there's a texture, it's la la la, all the fancy stuff. When I make it straight, it's not visible because it's buried behind the wall because the wall is not straight. So I have to make basically to match the diagonal of the wall with the diagonal of the painting or the vice versa one of the both things and this is the only 
thing where you should cheat really as you see me right now on the screen i'm manually adjusting those vertices to look straight when viewed from camera but when you viewed from the, out of the camera they will be really not straight as you can see right now and i have to move the camera and make it straight then and everything will be fine unless you have a couple of not straight walls then you have to really pay attention what you are doing and how you're doing but it will be fine i i, I trust you As far as the lighting goes in this image, as you can see, the, having the natural light coming from the windows is not enough and obviously it looks fake. So I had to add one lamp, which to re, it had to resemble this chandelier in a nice warm colors and to cast some light onto the back of the chairs and throughout the room. In this case, I don't have to uh, cast light onto the walls in some case this is needed and there is a tutorial coming for that so pay attention but in this case that's not it's it, it, i don't really need it the only problem i have with this image is are the reflections coming from the windows across the image and i have an entire dining table there with six chairs and those reflections shouldn't be there so we have either two options to place a rack on that floor or to erase those reflections and this is for another tutorial as well which is already recorded by the way so pay attention in the coming days If you haven't watched the other video which I've po uh, posted a few days ago, probably actually it was yesterday, um, make sure you watch it after the end of this one because it was very, it's, it is very helpful. There's tons of uh, things I've discussed there and uh, tons of helpful trick tips and tricks. It's not on perspective much, but it catches part of the perspective much thing. So make sure go and watch it just right now. And by the way, click the subscribe button, click the like button, share this video with your friends, with family, with your grandpa, with grandmother and everyone. And by the way, if you have more ideas, questions and anything you like to comment, leave a comment. See you next time. Well done guys. For those of you who reached so far at the end of the video, beyond the normal end of the video, let me tell you something. If we reach 100 likes until the end of this month on any of the videos on this channel, I will organize and plan a Q&A live session and on that live session one of you will have the opportunity to send me his scene and I will stage it in real time on this live. And this is now the real end. And by the way, make sure to watch that video again, I know it will help me a little bit, bye bye.